Hello and welcome to Esquire Group's latest video. My name is Jimmy Sexton LLM. I am the founder and CEO of Esquire Group. Today, we're going to be answering the all-important question, should I expatriate? Of course you should. Why? Because taxes suck. I'm kidding. The answer is not quite that simple and taxes are not the only reason to expatriate. But before we get into the considerations of what you need to think about before expatriating, a brief disclaimer. So, this presentation is prepared for educational purposes only. This presentation is not legal or tax advice, nor is it to be construed as such. Each individual's circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. So, let's get into it. There's a lot you need to consider when you're thinking about expatriating. And I tried to put some of this stuff together in a presentation that hopefully will give you some things to think about if you're considering expatriation. And I broke it down into legal considerations, emotional considerations, family considerations, financial considerations, work consideration, and some other random considerations uh, that people may not think about. So first let's talk about the legal considerations. Do you have another citizenship? Because if you don't have another citizenship, you can't really expatriate from the United States. Because if you expatriate without having a second citizenship, you become stateless, and that's not something that the US generally allows. So step one, do you even have a second citizenship so that you're able to expatriate? Secondly, you need to be aware of what you're giving up when you do expatriate. Um, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump ahead here for a second because it is irrevocable. There's no do-overs. Once you've expatriated, you're out, okay? So if you expatriate, you lose all privileges associated with US nationality. So you lose the right to vote, you lose the right to live in the US, you lose the right to enter the US, you lose the right to govern, US government protection, things like that. And one of the things that people often ask me when they're expatriating or considering expatriating is, well, I can get a visa to go back to the United States, right? Or, you know, I have a, a, a citizenship from a visa waiver country, I can go back to the US, right? Well, theoretically, yes. I mean, I, ha I don't have any clients that have been uh, denied re-entry to the United States, but I do have some clients that have had a hard time getting back in and, and a hard time getting visas. So once you give up your citizenship, you don't have a right to go to the US, it's a privilege. Um, and so you do need to be aware of that. Also, expatriation is not going to solve your past tax or military obligations to the United States. If you have tax or military obligations in the U.S. that came about while you were a U.S. citizen, you're still going to be liable for those obligations. Likewise, you have no protection from crimes committed within the United States and it does not alleviate any financial obligations incurred in the U.S. or by U.S. citizens abroad, right? So, you know, if you owe money in the U.S., uh, you're still going to owe that. Expatriating is not going to solve that. So I think that those are kind of a good basis of legal considerations that you should think about. Now let's move on to the emotional considerations. Now, one of the things that I've learned over the years is that giving up your U.S. citizenship um, in contrast to most citizenships is a very emotional decision. Um, and I think that it's very important to try to remove that emotional component as much as possible so that you can think about it clearly and make a decision based on facts rather than, than some feeling that, you know, really probably isn't so important, right? Uh, and one of the things that I find really interesting about U.S. citizenship is how emotionally attached people are to it. You know, I see people move from, you know, let's say Germany to Spain, for example, and after spending many years in Spain, they go, well, you know what, it just makes more sense to me to become a Spanish citizen since I'm going to stay here. And, you know, that's kind of all there is to it. There's not a lot of emotional attachment, usually, to other citizenships. But the U.S., um, people have a very emotional connection to the U.S. citizenship and they feel that it's somehow unpatriotic or un-American or, or, or wrong to, to expatriate. Uh, as an expatriate myself, I don't really feel that way, um, but I can understand how some people uh, can have those feelings and it is something to think about. 
in addition to how you feel about it personally, there's also, you know, how are your family and friends going to feel about it? How are they going to treat you? Are they going to look down on you? That is something that you need to consider. And also expatriation is public, right? Not that everybody's following this, but it is out there that your name is published uh, in a quarterly list of people who expatriated. So, you know, the information is available that you uh, expatriated and people may become aware of that, right? It's kind of a, a, a shaming thing the U.S. does by announcing the people that have expatriated. And so those are, I think, some of the things that emotionally you need to be aware of and consider uh, and, and be cognizant that these are emotional considerations and maybe not the most important things that you should be considering in terms of quality of life, your financial well-being, so on and so forth. So let's get into the family considerations. I think one of the very important things to think about is, is your family going to be happy with where you live? Have you guys visited the country where you plan on living? Have you maybe lived a year abroad there? Have your kids gone to school there? Because I, I think it's very important to know that your family is going to be happy where you decide to, to live. Are there going to be any immigration issues for family members who are going to be moving with you? If you have a second citizenship, but your family does not, and they have to immigrate somewhere as, you know, Americans, for example, are they going to have any immigration issues? Are they going to have any issues getting permanent residency or enrolling in school or doing any of the things that, that they need to do in order to live there? I think that's something very important that, that needs to be looked at. Are any of your family members going to remain U.S. citizens? And if so, how does that impact things? I think that that's a very important consideration, especially when you start talking about estate planning and things like that. The citizenships of your family matters. And so it's very important to explore the issues that if you have some members of your families that are U.S. citizens and some aren't, and whether or not you're a covered expatriate, how that impacts your life and estate planning and, and things of that nature. Do you want your unborn children to become U.S. citizens? Because if you expatriate and your, your spouse, for example, expatriates and either parent or to be parent is, is going to be a U.S. citizen, when that child is born, they're not going to get U.S. citizenship. Some parents want to pass U.S. citizenship to their kids so that their kids have the opportunity to live and work in the United States. So if that's something you want to pass on to your kids and both parents are U.S. citizens, maybe you want to consider just one parent expatriating so that the child can receive U.S. citizenship or if both parents expatriate, maybe having the kid born in the U.S. or something like that. But I think that that's an important consideration as well. And also, what are the implications of families with varying citizenships. This is something that became very relevant during the COVID-19 pandemic is, and, and I had a client where the mother was American and the child was a, a citizen of an EU country. And this was a catastrophe, right? Because they, when the lockdown was starting, they were not in a country of which either one of them was a citizen and they didn't have access to the same embassies. Repatriation flights were not always convenient because the child was a different citizenship from the mother. The places they were allowed to travel was different. It was quite a conundrum. So it's something that before COVID-19 a lot of times was not considered so thoroughly, but seeing what happened during the COVID-19 pandemic, I definitely think it's worth considering how these varying citizenships can potentially impact a family in a crisis situation. Financial consideration. So obviously, what, what are the tax consequences of expatriation, right? Are you, are you going to be a covered expatriate? Is there going to be an exit tax? Uh, how is this going to impact your gift and estate tax? If you still own assets in the United States, those are going to be subject to gift and estate taxes. Have you done planning for that? Do you know what the impact of that is? If you're going to be a covered expatriate, and your kids or heirs are U.S. citizens, they're still going to be subject to, to U.S. estate tax. Have you done any planning around that? So looking at the exit tax and the gift and estate taxes is a very important. 
along with, with, with withholding taxes. If you still own assets in the United States, are there going to be any withholding taxes on the income generated and paid over to you with your new citizenship and residency? What is the impact of your expatriation going to be on your Social Security and retirement accounts? Uh, there's usually withholding on retire on pension payments and Social Security payments. Generally, it's 30%. It's sometimes reduced by treaty, but it's something that needs to be considered. What is the impact on your U.S. investments? Again, if you own stocks, the dividends are probably going to be subject to withholding. One good thing is, if you own stocks, the buy gains from the sales of stocks in the United States as a non-resident alien are no longer going to be subject to U.S. tax. But you need to look at what's going to happen if you own real estate in the U.S. It's now going to be subject to FERPTA. Are any of the investments that you own restricted to U.S. persons? What about government assistance? You know, for example, uh, the, the PPP loans that the U.S. issued, companies in order to qualify for them need to be majority U.S. owned. What's the impact going to be on credited banking? Are there any uh, credit facilities that are restricted to U.S. citizens? Are your bank accounts restricted to being a U.S. citizen? You need to look at what all of this means for, you, for your estate and succession planning. And, and of course, considering the affordability of, of where you want to live is very, very important. If I live in Dubai, for example, it's great. I don't pay income taxes, but the cost of living is much, much higher. And especially if you want to send, send your kids to school, a lot of people a lot of expats send their kids to private school, and that's quite costly. So these are all things that need to be considered before expatriation. Then we need to look at what the work considerations are. Can you work where you intend to live? Are there going to be any restrictions on the type of immigration status that you have that would prohibit you from working? What's the job market like? Are you going to be able to find a job where you live? What's the impact on your business if you're a business owner? Are you going to move your company to this new country? Uh, are you allowed to operate that same company in that country? Do you operate in a regulated uh, business like a financial advisory firm that requires a license or banking or something like that? Does your work require a professional license? For example, a lawyer or accountant, do you need to pass the bar in this new country where you're going to live or meet any specific requirements in order to be able to practice your trade there? So again, these are all very important things to look at. And of course, some other considerations. What are your educational requirements? Are you going to be able to, does the place where you intend to live have the type of education available that you want your kids and other family members or even yourself to have access to? Does it have health care acceptable to your standards? Have you ever lived abroad before, right? If you've never lived abroad before, I think it's very risky to just expatriate and assume you're going to like it. Living in other countries, having done so myself, it's quite different and you need to know that you're capable of doing that. So if you've never lived abroad before, that should be something you may want to try out before actually expatriating and, and, and moving abroad. Has your family lived abroad before, right? You want to make sure that they're comfortable and that it's something that they're capable of doing. Have you ever worked or ran a business from abroad? I've had a lot of people run into issues after expatriating, trying to start business or, or abroad or working abroad, never having done so before, and they found it very challenging because it's very different and oftentimes much more difficult than it is in the United States. And then have you thought about where you want to retire, right? Because a lot of times expatriation is great, especially when we talk about the tax advantages of doing it, and people look at that to say, wow, I can make so much more money by expatriating and not having to pay taxes and living somewhere tax advantage. But do you want to stay out of the United States for your entire life? Because a lot of people want to go back to where they're from to retire. And if you expatriate, that's not really going to be an option. So again, that's something that you want to seriously consider. You need to really think ahead. In conclusion, expatriation should seriously be considered if you can obtain a second citizenship and you don't plan on permanently residing in the United States. So if you have a second citizenship or you can get one and you don't plan on permanently residing in the U.S. now or in the future, definitely I think expatriation has some advantages that need to be seriously looked at. Expatriation generally makes economic sense if the tax consequences are acceptable. Pre-expatriation planning can often dramatically reduce the tax consequences if you're going to be subject to an exit tax. 
sometimes long-term SAC savings outweigh the immediate tax consequences. So I've had a lot of clients that have been covered expatriates, they've had an exit tax, but when they've looked at the overall savings, giving their anticipated earnings and stuff over their lifetime, it still made financial sense to, to expatriate. And not just from a tax perspective, but also for the types of investments they can get involved in, because a lot of investments exclude US persons. You also have dramatically reduced tax compliance costs, right? So a lot of people, they're actually fine paying the tax. What they have a problem with is the tax compliance because it's thousands of dollars a year just to report your income and assets to the United States. And if you get it wrong, the penalties are extremely high. So that's a risk factor a lot of people don't want to have. Another consideration is the US is really designed well for foreign persons to do business with the US and pay less tax. A perfect example of this is gains on stocks, right? If you're a US citizen and you sell stock at a gain, you pay capital gains tax. Now, as a non-resident alien, when I sell stocks, I pay nothing. So this is something that you really need to look at that between tax treaties and the US tax rules as it pertains to non-US persons, a lot of times, it's a lot more affordable to do business in the U.S. and with the U.S. as a foreigner than it is a U.S. person. More often than not, when you remove the emotional considerations from the analysis of whether or not to expatriate, the benefits of expatriation become very, very clear. Here's a pro tip, and I kind of touched on this earlier. If you've never lived or worked abroad, you should definitely do so for a a reasonable period of time to get a feel for it and make sure you like it and it's acceptable for you before actually pulling the trigger on expatriation. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you find the information valuable and informational and useful. If you have any questions about expatriation, you can reach us at esquiregroup.com or shoot us an email at info at esquiregroup.com. See you on the next Esquire Group video. See ya!